Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakhakwadash. All right, Yahweh is the name of Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba'in Hada, Sham name, Yahweh Shai being the only begotten Son, meaning He delivered, He saves, Rakhakwadash, Holy Spirit. Okay, double honors to the apostles and all those great Muslims that were well, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom, and above all, back at it again with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Okay, and I basically want to get into the topic of, you know, who will rise up, man, and ultimately the ones that will rise up is the men of the Lord, the prophets. All right, the men set up to. Uh, Prophesy the downfall of this place. Prophesy the coming of Yahweh Shai's kingdom uh, that will be upon earth under the righteous order of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. You know, to prophesy of the things to come, the different calamities and judgments the Lord's got. Okay, to prophesy against Esau's kingdom, the heathen. You know, this is necessary because you have a lot of people who know about the wickedness that's being done in the planet earth. And in Esau Edom's rulership, but they're afraid to speak out against it, you know. But Yahweh Bashmashai has raised up his prophets here in these last days. As the scripture say, the Lord uh, set forth the apostles last. Okay, you know, so the Lord is raising up his men, okay, to go out here and do the work and speak against this place, man. You got a lot of people who are afraid to speak against this place. And um, basically, you know, the scriptures speak about how none moved the wing nor peeped against Esau Edom. You know, when he took when he took control over this kingdom. But Yahweh Bashmashai has his men out here, you know, crying aloud and not sparing to expose the wickedness of this devil, man. Okay? And to uh, prophesy Yahweh Shai's kingdom. Okay, which is a, when you think about it, that's a big deal because a lot of people, they may know the truth, but if they they don't tell people about it, then what good is it? As the scriptures say in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 20 and 30, wisdom that is hid and treasure that is hoarded up. What profit is in them both, man? Better is he that hideth his folly than a man that hideth his wisdom. That's right. But the thing is, they set folly open. All right. And they, they exalt it in this place. But when it comes to the truth, they hide it. But the Lord said, it's better you hide your folly than to hide wisdom, man. Okay. You know. So we don't want to have this treasure that Yahweh Shemeshai has given us, the gift that has been given to us by the laying on the hands of the Presbytery, like it says in 1 Timothy, the fourth chapter. We're not supposed to hide this talent in a napkin. We're supposed to go out there and proclaim this truth. And that's a part of us making our bodies a living sacrifice. Because when you go out there and you do the work of the Lord, you know, right now it seems all handy dandy. And it seems routine, but one thing you must realize, every time you go out and you hit the highways and byways, you are putting your life in jeopardy. Every single time you upload a video, you're putting your life in jeopardy because you're speaking against this place, man. Okay? You're speaking against this place. And there's a quote by Voltaire that says, you know, if you want to know who's in power, just look at the one who you're not allowed to criticize. Okay, and that's Amalek, man. The JEWs, you know, all the wickedness that they do. All right, if you speak out against it, you get demonized, you get persecuted. They try to label you anti Shem. All right, but the thing about it is, it's not that you're anti Shem, you're anti wickedness, and that's what they're all about wickedness. Okay, because we. As Hebrew Israelites, not black Hebrew Israelites, because we're not black. We're different 
shades of brown. Okay. The point of it, the point of it being, we are Shemitic. Okay. So we're not anti Shem. We're anti evil. We're anti wickedness. Okay. So we're speaking out against your wickedness, man. So let's get into the lesson through the spirit. Let's go into the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 58 and 1, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and shoot my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins, man. Okay? And that's what we're doing. We're crying aloud. We're not sparing these people's feelings. We're not sparing the truth. We're getting the blood off our hands. Because like the Apostle Paul said in Acts 20, he said, I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of the Most High. Roughly paraphrasing. This is Acts chapter 20. Just lock you. Acts 20. And verse 20. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. But have shewed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks. Repentance toward the Most High. And faith toward our Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Right. And those Greeks referring to the Israelite foreigners. Okay, that took on the Greek customs. But it says, right. He said he kept back nothing that's profitable. It's better to hide your folly than to hide your wisdom. You know, wisdom and a gift hoarded up. What profit is in them both, man? Right? So he kept back nothing that's profitable. Well, that's the same thing that the true men of the Lord are out here doing. Keeping back nothing profitable. You know, going out boldly, proclaiming the truth to Yahweh Basham al Regardless of who hears or forbears, man. And for you Jakes out there... It's funny because you look to Esau for advice and you look at Esau's inspiration, right? But you disregard the men of the Lord. But Esau, the same one you look up to, he actually takes heed to what the men of the Lord say. <laughs> okay, but the thing is, salvation is not for him. But he understands what the doctrine of the men of the Lord is about. And that's why he's going to try to roll on the men of the Lord because he understands that they're not that they're not a part of his part. They're not for his cause. But he hearkens. Okay? These devils know about the prophecies. You know? Your high ranking Edomites, guess what? They know the scriptures to be real. Okay? They know that they're not the children of the most high. But they know the scriptures are real. They know the scriptures are true. Okay? And there's plenty of examples in the scriptures that back that up. Like Herod, when the wise men came to Herod, said they were coming to worship Yahweh Shai. What did Herod do to the scribes and Pharisees? It said he demanded of them where Mashiach should be born according to the prophecies. Okay? Another example was Agrippa. Apostle Paul told Agrippa that he knows Agrippa believes in the prophets. <laughs> okay? Why? Because these devils study us, man. They know our history, man. And they know that we are the children of the Most High. Okay? But let me keep reading. Acts 20. And 22. Now behold, I go bound in the spirit into Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Save the Holy Spirit, witness it in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Right, because Apostle Paul is jeopardizing his life to push the truth, same way the men of the Lord are. It says, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, to testify the gospel of the grace of the Most High. Right, so it's the same thing with the men of the Lord who are in the right spirit. None of these things move them. Not life, not death, not height, nor depth. You know, nothing moves the men of Yahweh Bashmashai. Nothing separates uh, the men of Yahweh Bashmashai from their love and Mashiach, man. 
even if it results in their life being put on the line. Okay? It says, and now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of the Most High shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of Yahweh of Hashem Shai. That's right, man. So the men of the Lord are getting the blood off their hands by going out and speaking against the oppression of this place. Okay, as we should be doing. You know, Lord willing, we be those men. Ezekiel chapter 3. Starting at verse 17, son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. That's right. That's what we're set up to do. Give them warning from Yahweh Bashmel Shai and his judgment. Okay. The Lord gave Israel commandment on what they need to do to avoid punishment. But they disregarded it. They misused the prophets, as the scriptures say. Okay. And so, basically, by you misusing the prophets, that's you disregarding the word of the Lord. Because you see mortal men. You see mortal men moving their mortal mouths, speaking out of their mortal tongues. But what you don't realize is that they're speaking the words of an immortal power. Okay? The living power. Yahweh Bashem al Shah. Okay? That's the difference. But when you disregard his men, you disregard the Lord. As the scriptures say, he that receiveth you, receiveth me. He that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me, man. Okay? Ezekiel 3 and 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doeth not sin, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. You see? So, a part of us going out here and proclaiming his word, having the privilege to do so, comes with responsibility. We have blood on our hands if we don't warn you. It's just like, you know, if you know there's a ditch coming along the path, but the people following behind you doesn't know there's a ditch and you don't let them know that there's a ditch. Guess what? If they fall into the ditch, their blood is on you because you didn't warn them about that ditch. Well, that's what we're figuratively doing when we go out and we proclaim the words of the Lord. And you need men who have the boldness and the courage and the strength of Yahweh Bashmashai within their spirit to do these things, man. Because this isn't a light thing. It's not easy to go out there on the highways and byways week in, week out, day in and day out doing the work of the Lord. It's not grievous, but it's also not a light thing. We're truly doing a major, major work. And we will be rewarded for it if we endure. You know? It seems like a small thing, but it's not, man. Because what we're doing is taking the cloak away from these people, man. Okay? <laughs> Let me get this real quick. Songs of Solomon. Five and seven. The watchman that went about the city found me they smoked me they wounded me the keepers of the walls took away my veil from me right the watchmen represent the prophets okay they found me meaning what they exposed you they found out your iniquity you've been revealed 
through the spirit. It says, they smote me, they wounded me. Meaning what? You got wounded with correction from the truth of the Lord. Okay? You got cut. Hebrews 4 and 12, Psalms 141 and 5. It says, the keepers of the walls took away my veil from me. Right? Because now you have no cloak for your sins because you've been warned. The blood is now off their hands, man. Now your blood be upon your own heads if you take not heed. Okay? And these men are set up through the spirit to do these things, man. And a lot of people disregard the counsel of the men of Yahweh by Shemashai to their own demise, to their own destruction. And see, it's the will of the Lord that his men are out here doing this work, man. The Lord said he put his words in our mouth. Okay? As he told Jeremiah. All right? Jeremiah 1 and 5. Behold, be slakia. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You see? So we have a big cup to drink, man. You know, this isn't a light thing. Then said I, our oh, Lord power, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. Trying to give excuses. That's the flesh. The flesh tries to find the easy way out. Excuses, you know. Thinking that the most high made a mistake when he called you unto this thing. But the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. You see? So the Lord is telling us who is out here doing this work, don't be afraid of their faces. Okay? Which is a very, very important thing because a lot of people, they're going to give you all types of faces and responses and reactions to when you take away their veil, when you cut them with the truth, man. Some of them going to even want to kill you. But guess what? The judgment is the Lord's, man. All right? This isn't about sparing anybody's feelings. It's about pushing the truth. Okay? You know? And if you're offended at the truth, then guess what? Take it up with your how about Shmel Shai. We are the messengers. Lord willing, we be a part of that elect number. And we are commanded as messengers not to be afraid of their faces, man. Okay? Verse 9, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. And that's what we're doing through the spirit. And what are we rooting out? What are we plucking out? What are we destroying? Esau's wicked kingdom. We're destroying the wicked foundations of these wicked people. Because we don't just prophesy against the nations. We prophesy against the wicked of our people as well. And what are we building up? What are we planting? The righteousness of Yahweh Bashem El Shai in the planet Earth. Beginning with this truth. Okay. Psalms 15 and 21. These things hast thou done and I kept silence. Right. All the wickedness Esau's done. The Lord held his peace for a while. It says thou thoughtest. That I was altogether such as one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. And that's what you're seeing now. See, Esau thought the Lord was on his side because everything he did to us, all the oppression, putting us through slavery, held him back. You know, it was like the Lord wasn't judging him. But now he's speaking against him through his men. He's setting them in order before his eyes and great fear is falling upon these nations because of it. That's why they have things like the ADL, all right, you know, the anti-Semitic phrase, so on and so forth. Revelation 11 and 11, after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Yahweh Bashmashai entered into them. Meaning what? After a period of 350 years, which represents those three days and a half, the Lord raised up Abba Bivens, which is John the Baptist in the reincarnation, a.k.a. Elijah. In the reincarnation. Before the great. Dreadful. Coming of the day of the Lord. Like it says in the book of Malachi. The fourth chapter. And what the Lord did. 
through Abba Bivens was put the spirit of life into him. Preach the truth. Preach about Yahweh Shai. Preach about the 12 tribes of Israel. Preach about Esau Edom's downfall. So on and so forth. That was the beginning of Esau Edom's downfall. When he sent his nest among the stars. During the, during the time of the late 60s, what did Esau do? He started going up into space, right? Or claiming to go up into space. Obadiah 1 and 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, right? Going up into the upper atmosphere. Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Yeah, that was the beginning of Esau's downfall. And Abba Bibbins was raised up simultaneously around that same time. Down to our onto our apostles and elders. All the way down to us younger brothers here today. Continuing to, to uh, other men's labors that we've entered into. As the scripture said, we've entered into other men's labors. Built upon the foundation of Yahweh Shai. All right. And that spirit of life is the Holy Spirit. That's what it is. Okay. It says, and they stood upon their feet. Meaning what? You've seen all these different camps coming up worldwide. It says, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Yeah, these elites is trembling in their boots. That's why the scriptures say, shake the hand. That's what we've been, what we've been doing. Isaiah 13 and 2. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. That's what we're doing. We're lifting up the banner of Yahweh Shemashai upon the high mountain of Babylon the Great. You know? A.K.A. America. It says, exalt the voice unto them. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're crying aloud. We're not sparing. We're exalting the voice. It says, shake the hand, which represents rebuke. You're rebuking somebody. You're shaking the hand at them. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. And that's exactly what we've seen. We've seen people try to go into the gates of nobles already. Try to call the cops on us. Try to get us removed off the streets. Go into the governors. To the president. You know, you even had Donald Trump speak about the prophets of doom. That's us entering into the gates of the nobles, man. Okay? These elites know about us. Just like our Lord, Yahweh Shai went before the gates of the nobles. And the apostles as well. That's how you know. We're really getting to these devils, man. If we were just preaching uh, fairy tales, you really think that we would enter into the gates of the nobles? They would disregard us and, and write us off like a joke. If we were really preaching fairy tales, why did they have try to have some of our leaders sell out and buy them off to not preach the truth? If we're preaching fairy tales, man. Because these devils know we got the truth through the spirit of power of Yahweh by Shemar Shai. And that's the thing, Esau. You can pay off who you want. Your kingdom's still going to crumble. <laughs> you threw either way. You lost. You lost. You had your time to rule. And now it's over, man. Okay? And that's why you're coming down with great wrath. Because you know you have a short time. Okay? Second Ezra 15 and 8. It says, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. That's right, man. Okay? So the Lord is saying, I'm going to hold my tongue no more touching their wickedness. Meaning what? His men out here prophesying against this place. Speaking up against the corruption of this place, man. He's not suffering them in their wickedness no more. The Lord is bringing judgment. Second Andrews 14 and 13. Now, therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. That's what we're doing. We're setting our house in order. We're getting our spirit right. We're getting our household right through the spirit. Because best believe the Lord is getting ready to bring judgment. There's going to be a time of trouble upon America that the world has never seen before, man. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. Such an evil time and such a time of trouble that the world has never seen before, man. Okay? Famine. Wild beasts on the loose. Martial law. Okay? Police state. You know, chaos. Civil unrest. All right? 
uproars of the people, earthquakes in diverse places, man. Pestilences, cannibalism, okay? These are the times that we're coming into. Hey, don't be surprised if you see some damn zombies out here, man. You never know. Just know it's going to get bad. So we are to set our houses in order. Okay? It says, and reprove thy people. And that's what we're doing. We're reproving our people, man. We're correcting them. It says, and comfort such of them that's being in trouble. Right? And that's what we're doing. We're bringing comfort through the scriptures. This is the comforter. It says, and now renounce corruption. You go into that word renounce, it means to protest against. That's what we're doing. We're protesting against the corruption of this place. We're sighing and crying. Ezekiel 9 and 4. And the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem. And said, a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. That's the elect. The elect are sighing and crying, man. Okay. All these different abominations done in the world, the elect are the ones crying out who the Lord has raised up in these last days. Okay? And if you're not crying out for the wickedness of this place, then guess what? You're not in the right spirit. Okay? And you're going to get caught up in the judgment since you want to consent unto it. Second Thessalonians 2 and 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. That's right. How is that wicked being revealed? He's been exposed. Esau has been exposed. The Lord said he made Esau bear that he cannot hide himself. All the world has seen Esau, beginning with Amalek, for what they truly are, which is a base man, a base, wicked, vile, evil man. And the Lord is consuming him with the spirit of his mouth. Which is these scriptures. See, that's what really hurts Esau's feelings. You can call him a cracker. You can call him this. You can call him that. But when you call him an Edomite and you read about his judgment in the scriptures, that's what really consumes him, man. Because guess what? It's the word of the Lord. It cuts deeper and it's sharper than any two edged sword. <laughs> All right. The scriptures say what? A wounded spirit who can bear it. Hey, this, these scriptures got the power to wound your spirit, man. A wounded spirit who can bear, man. And especially not Esau, weak ass. He can't bear it, man. He know he threw. You know? See, Jake think they're doing something when they're being, quote unquote, successful in Esau's kingdom. You know? Esau may not like that. But what he really doesn't like is when you know the truth of your how about Shemel Shah. That's what he really doesn't like. Okay? You being a coon ain't really hurting Esau's feelings like that. As long as you don't know who you are. But once you know who you are and you know who he is, and you know his judgment, that's how you really get to him. That's how you really consume him. And the Lord, Yahweh Shah, is going to destroy him with the brightness of his coming. When he returns back with the chariots, the so-called UFOs. That's why these devils made a space for us. Because they know that prophecy ought to be fulfilled. So that's the point on that right there. Abarazah's out his lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rekach, Kodash. All right? Double honors to the apostles and others, great most of them, well, peace and blessings to the Israel. Shalom, and the Bible of all.